That's one reason we are not getting the kind of foreign direct investment we should be getting, which would uh, expand employment and uh, generate incomes and make life easier. So our external relations, our external image, our external profile, all of this has something very radically wrong in it. And instead of that, what I, what I saw on, on your channel of this parliamentary exchange, he, he, he is, I mean, made me very sad because uh, uh, the government, these are ministers who are paid by the people. I mean, they may be privately wealthy, but they're paid by the people. These are, the ministries are run by monies generated from the people. They mustn't, uh, they must tell the truth to the people and they must tell the truth to the president about what our vulnerability is globally uh, in, instead of, uh, you know, uh, excuses and and wrong uh, and those answers that uh, that were given they are all i mean basically they they're off the wall if i may say so one of the answers uh, from the minister of external affairs was that um, we lost the vote in 2012 and 2013 though we won it in 29, 2009 because the americans moved the resolution and the americans have a lot of uh, countries with which they have bilateral relationships and those relationships count in the vote and therefore mm, we lost there was a change in the voting patterns and uh, yeah because the country that say, exactly it was actually uh, it was a relationship between the country that moves the resolution and the countries from where you're canvassing for votes yeah well you know if that's <laughs> if that's the way we are going to look at this uh, I, I feel very sorry for, for Sri Lanka because um, I mean look this is just not true uh, in 2011, there was a hugely controversial uh, debate in UNESCO, which was, you know, uh, the whole world was looking, it wasn't like the vote on Sri Lanka, it was a big deal. Uh, because the American government, President Obama, and personally Senator, uh, uh, sorry, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, were canvassing against the, the admission of Palestine to UNESCO, because it was the first UN body it would have been admitted to. Uh, there is a big Jewish lobby in the United States. Uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu of Israel had already targeted uh, President Obama, calling him weak in his support of Israel. So President Obama and Hillary Clinton personally lobbied the countries in UNESCO uh, to vote against the admission of Palestine. Now, the admission of Palestine required a two-thirds majority, minor. The United States finally said, if you admit Palestine, we are going to cut the money to UNESCO. In fact, that's what happened. They cut the money to UNESCO. But Palestine, which doesn't even have a country, I mean, you know, it's got an authority, Palestinian authority in Ramallah. It is nothing like uh, the diplomatic capacity of the United States of America. It won by more than two-thirds. I know I was there, I was part of it, I mean, for some reason, Turkish newspapers had my picture on the front page because we were all in the front lines of the struggle. I mean, the Americans were defeated, despite the relationships that it has with all these countries. How? If in that matter, the resolution that was brought in against Sri Lanka was also defeated in 2009. In 2009. Now, uh, uh, Professor Peary seems to think that the Americans didn't move the resolution. Of course, the Americans didn't move the resolution, but he must read the WikiLeaks cables. The cable dated 4th May. 2009 from no less a person than Secretary of State Hillary Clinton herself, not some other official, not an assistant Secretary of State, uh, instructing the U.S. mission in Geneva to support canvas votes for helping in uh, the drafting of the EU resolution on Sri Lanka. So the United States was doing what the, what the Americans call leading from behind already in 2009. But Sri Lanka prevailed. Now, if the secret of our defeat in 2012 and 2013 is this relationship the U.S. has with the countries that voted, then one also has to ask oneself, what about those left-wing governments of Latin America where there are no Tamil votes and they are by no means puppets of the United States? They supported us in 2009 and they voted against us by 2013. Why? Could it be the American factor that uh, 
the urban guerrilla leader of uh, Uruguay uh, and Brazil decided to vote against Sri Lanka? Obviously not. Now, if we keep lying to ourselves and to the president and to the citizenry that pays our salaries, then, I mean, we are going to walk blindly into uh, this, I won't even call it an ambush, because David Cameron has announced it in the House of Commons, the battle in Geneva in March 2014. Now, even if you concede, okay, the Americans uh, moved the resolution, uh, what is the conclusion? That every time the Americans move a resolution, we are going to be defeated? How do you uh, explain the vote in the UN General Assembly this year, where Cuba moved a resolution against the United States? 188 votes for Cuba, two votes for the United States, including the United States, the United States and Israel. 188 votes for the Cubans. Do the Cubans have more bilateral ties with the rest of the world than the United States of America? No, it does not. You win an election externally pretty much the same way you win an election at home. You have to persuade, you have to be able to convince, you have to sound credible uh, you have to treat your voter with respect. They have to like you. In 2009, they sort of were persuaded by us. They liked us. Now, they don't like us. And that has also got to do with the image of the country. The image. It's to do with the message. The message. Now, I, I read the foreign minister's speech, parliamentary speech, it was in the newspapers. And he says, uh, Sri Lanka's history is uh, our pride and treasure and so on. What has our history got to do with uh, Geneva? I mean, they're not going to test you. They're not going to vote for you on the basis of your history. Uh, I mean, okay, India then uh, has a, an older history or, or China has an older history than that. It's not a, it's not a quiz. or it's, You're not awarded prizes on the basis of the kind of history you have. The UN Human Rights Council is based on the idea that as human beings, never mind the country you come from, as human beings, we have certain inalienable rights and that we have signed up to a charter to respect and protect those rights. But the minister did say that uh, these countries are uh, bringing in resolutions, re when they bring in resolutions, these countries don't take into consideration the ground situation in Sri Lanka. Yeah, but Mahina, that even if it's true, it's also irrelevant. Then you must be able to convince the majority of voters there in the Human Rights Council that that is the case. Now, let me share something with you and with our viewers, which is very important. Few people know that the UN Human Rights Council in Geneva has a permanent built-in majority for the third world permanent built-in majority. I know because I was uh, part of, uh, I, I was a, a vice president of the Human Rights Council at the moment that we gaveled through uh, what's known as the institution building package, that is the, the constitution of the Human Rights Council. Why do we have a permanent built-in majority? Because we all insisted that the council must accurately reflect the demographic, i.e. the population composition of the world. So, though the countries keep changing, the regions have a fixed number of votes. So, Latin America has eight votes, if I remember. Um, Africa has 13. Asia-Pacific has 13. Um, so, the total, if, if I'm not much mistaken, uh, is that the third world, Africa, Asia, Latin America, the regions uh, have 34 votes. The total number of votes is 47. So to win, you need 24 votes. We got 29 mm. in 2009. Uh, you need to get 24 votes in a council to win. 24 votes in a council where 34 votes are permanently from Asia, Africa and Latin America. Okay, so 72% of the council is Asia, Africa, Latin America, Af uh, Asia Pacific, okay, Asia Pacific, Africa, Latin America. Uh, the Europeans and the Western group and the Eastern European group, the former Soviet bloc, which is now, you know, virtually satellites of, of the West, 
they have a minority of votes. Um, uh, they, they have uh, they have 13 votes. So in 2009, we were able to get 29 of the 34 third world votes. In 2012, we were down to 13. In 2013, we were down to 12. Now, if we can't win, and if we keep losing and losing our majority, our, our, our votes, in a council where the majority belong to Asia, Africa, and Latin America, then there's something going very wrong with Sri Lanka's foreign policy. And if somebody says, okay, the Indians voted against us in 2012, now that's another reason. Well, if they voted with us in 2009, and they voted against us in 2012, we should have seen that coming, because there were signals all over. Uh, and then, once they voted against us in 2012, we should have known they were going to vote against us in 2013, and done something about it. We didn't. So the Indians voted against us in 2013 as well, and we lost. But as I said, there is a built-in majority for Asia, Pacific, Africa, and Latin America, 72%. This is our natural constituency, our vote base. If we are shrinking there, then we have to look in the mirror. We have to turn the searchlight inwards, as the Buddha recommended. Not keep talking about the American relationships with, mm. uh, with other countries. Because then, I mean, how do you explain the Palestinians winning? How do you explain the Cubans winning? It, you know. Mm. So th this is, uh, this is, I'm sorry to say, but this is just not uh, true. And if this is the delusional and dishonest way in which we are proceeding, we will suffer a shock in 80 days. And we are the only ones who are going to be shocked because everybody else knows what's going to happen. Mm -hmm.